Antler Up, Episode 7, Justin Renfro. Let's go. Antler Up, Edmonton. The Elks are on the board. There it is. Antler Up, Edmonton. Touchdown, Elks. Cornelius will throw to the outside to Shy Ross. At the 10, to the 5. Antler Up, Edmonton. Touchdown, Elks. Hey, everybody. Welcome inside the Joey Moss Suite here. Uh, hi. Over top of Commonwealth Stadium, uh, Justin Renfro is our guest this week. Hey, Justin, thanks for hey, joining us. Thanks for having me. Good to be back. Excellent. Now, I don't normally dress for my guests on yeah. Antler Up, but uh, today, oh, today I'm doing it. Oh, I appreciate it. I'm getting dressed today, and I thought, I got to wear this today. Oh, I, I appreciate it. So we'll yeah. put that over there, right? So there we go. That's the uh, Justin Renfro uh, shirt. Where can people get one of those? Uh, I'll have them back up later this season. Uh, cooking kind of took the forefront as of late, so I haven't been doing as much uh, yeah. clothing work. But I'll, I'll try to get them back up by we're the gonna, season. We're going to talk about cooking later for okay. sure. Uh, let's start at the beginning, man. Uh, Philadelphia. Yep. Born and bred or just born? Born, born and raised, yes, What was sir. it like growing up in Philly? Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, early on, you know, uh, me and my parents, we moved to the suburbs, uh, had a great life in the Yardley area, but, you know, uh, just pushed for a little more. I still remember uh, having the conversation with my dad. I got ranked in the top 100, and he's like, okay, we're going to send you to this private school. My dad, he just got inducted into the Hall of Fame in the same league, but I, I went to the William Penn Charter School. Uh, and he said to me, like, this is your college money. We're spending 30 k a year to go to this private school. you got to get it done. And so that was the start of kind of, you know, getting it done in the football world. So that meant you had to get a scholarship, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. And uh, it worked out? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, as a – I missed my freshman year of football due to an injury. But uh, as a sophomore, I had pretty much most of the Big East by my third game as a uh, sophomore was coming to recruit me so was on a good track early I committed as I committed the summer of my sophomore year I didn't I didn't like all the hype of recruiting and that's back in the age a lot of people won't even remember this but having sidekicks and using aim messenger on the computer so <laughs> coaches could hit you up on aim there was no real delegation on how they could text message you and all that stuff so it was a lot and you know I had over 20 schools and coaches doing that every day I just like all right let's pick somewhere and let's get this done with and and that's a lot of people don't understand about the recruiting process in the states because yeah. if you're ranked high which you were yeah. uh, everybody wants you right everybody yes. wants to talk to you and see if you'll come to their school it's mm -hmm. it's got to be I would, and you're how old at this time uh, so I was a sophomore, so I'm like 16, 17. It's got to be pretty overwhelming for a teenager. Yeah, uh, it, at some point it was. Uh, at a lot of points I was already prepared for it because of AAU basketball, being on a national contender AAU team, kind of used to being in the limelight for basketball. It just – it, I was happy because I wanted to play football. My dad kind of didn't want me to because he knew about all the injuries being a, a big-time running back. So that was a big kind of we butt heads on. But after a while, you know, you love a game, you love a game, and he was proud to see me out there. It's clearly in your blood, right? Yeah. It's pretty hard to argue against yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, so your dad, he's in the Hall of Fame for that? Yeah, uh, yeah that... at the Episcopal Academy. He just yeah. uh, this past spring, so I was lucky to be home during a time off to be able to see him go in the Hall of Fame. And he was uh, in that league that I, I played in years later. He was the first African-American captain in the entire league. So it was a big thing. I learned a lot of stuff about my own father in the last few months going through that whole Hall of Fame process with him. That's, that's kind of cool because a lot of us, y we see our parents, we don't really know what they're all about. Yeah. We just know that they're feeding us and yeah, giving yeah. us a place to live and exactly. telling us to be home by 10, right? Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of must be yeah, kind of neat so to, to learn yeah, some stuff. Yeah, yeah, like my dad was ranked, uh, he's still to this day, Daily News, uh, like Daily News also, kind of how we do the All-Stars here They for the entire city of Philly. He's all-decade team for the 70s and all that. So, yeah, he was really good. All his friends started showing me press clippings and stuff. He's never been a guy to brag, but my dad was damn good. So How uh, how far did he play? Uh, he far? ended up stopping after college because in the 70s when you tear your knee, you yeah. it was kind of over. But, yeah, playing both ways in college, I think that's a pretty big feat in itself. You played both ways too, right? Like I saw something. Yeah. You were like the seventh ranked tight end. Yeah, so, out, is that coming out of high school? Yeah, yeah, in coming out of high school. Yeah, in the yeah. country. So yeah, I, I could blaze a little bit. I was six four, like two forty. I ran a four seven, 
four eight, so I could move a little bit. But you know, defense was my calling, so uh, you know, ended up picking up the D line thing. I think I went from two sixty when I started freshman year to going into my red shirt freshman year and playing. I was at uh, three hundred pounds, so wow. yeah. So you went from tight end to defensive line. Yeah. When did you switch back uh, to the offensive side on the O line? Uh, that was the Seattle Seahawks after after we lost in the Super Bowl. I came back and they said, "Prepare this off season to be an O lineman," and so that's what I did. You How'd know? you take that? Uh, you know, at the time, you know, I'm, I'm somebody that was told his junior year of college, like, you're not going to play pro ball. So I was happy to be there and to be on that team and to live my dream, you know, something I chased hard for two years to get to that point. And a lot of people doubted me even being able to get there. So, Okay, let's go back to college. You, you decided early where you were going to go and you decided on Virginia, right? Yeah. Yeah, why? Uh, at the time, Coach Grow. A uh, highly, a really successful defensive coach, uh, Chris Long and Nate Collins. They were close friends, and and Dom Joseph, all close friends who were already there. Three other guys were playing basketball from my high school there, so it was coach close knit. And uh, Coach Beeland came, and the D line coach at the time came and saw me pretty much every week since I've been a sophomore. So mm-hmm. going there, I was like excited, and then you know, of course, how college football works. Coach Beelan was gone the week before I stepped on campus, and Coach Grow was gone by the end of my red shirt year. And so, you know, starting over, new coaches, a lot of different things and turmoils go on, but I feel like it all happened for a reason so that I could graduate in three years and be at Miami. Yeah, I was going to say that started the process of you yeah. moving to Miami. Mm-hmm. I took 22 school. credits for a couple semesters to – stockpile it up and get out early so I could play. So that's and what I'd be done. your last year was pretty good, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, you put good. up some numbers in yeah, that year, yeah. didn't you? I did a good, yeah. yeah. So it was fun. Uh, you know, being the fifth leading tackler on the team after nobody gave you a chance all the years before. And, you know, we ended up going to a bowl game, almost was in the ACC championship. And, you know, just to be a part of that and somebody that was dependent on was a lot of fun. So you, you've been kind of fighting it. Again, going upstream your whole career then, right? Yeah, bit. yeah. That must be pretty gratifying to after it's fun. hearing all that to be where you are playing pro ball. When yeah, yeah, yeah. it's wouldn't. fun. And I think that's, uh, that's a lot of what I, I talk to a lot of the kids and throughout Canada and the U.S. about. And that's something I've embraced, you know. I went through that for a reason, and I feel like it's – to give positive reinforcement back to the next generation going to have to go through the same things. Tell me about your NFL tour. Uh, yeah, that's a great way to describe it. You know, uh, came into the league as a defensive lineman with the Cardinals, got some sacks, uh, thought I was going to be there, didn't work out, got picked up by the Packers after going to the XFL. And that was, I played, what, I play. I looked up on YouTube how to play O-line, played O-line one week. They thought I'd been playing O-line wait my sec, whole wait life. Wait a sec. You got instructions on how to play O-line from YouTube? Yeah, I went out on YouTube and looked it up, and then Domingo Graham gave me, like, two practices. He's a former Dallas Cowboy, and uh, he helped me out two weeks, and then I played in this experimental league game, and then the next week the Packers picked me up. I went, I gave up no sacks, and they brought me in. I did all – I did the entire workout, everything. They signed me, and it wasn't till. We were finishing the papers and stuff, and I was like, so somebody's going to tell me, like, the terminology and stuff, right? Because I never played O-line before, and no, nobody in the room realized that. And so that kind of – that started my journey. So in practice with the Packers, I'd play defensive line, and then I'd go play offensive line. And so played both for a while there, Went then got traded to the Seahawks. Played both for a while there, and then finally after the Super Bowl, they're like, "No, nah, you're just an O-lineman. And then that started my tour then to the Cowboys, 49ers, and then I tore my foot on the Bills, so that's how I got to the CFL. Yeah. Uh, your first CFL stop was Calgary, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. Tell me about the process to get you there. Uh, what was it like, and were you were you open to it? Like, I mean, uh, it's it's got to be tough, I think, for a lot of American players to – 
not so much give up the dream of the NFL, but to turn your back on at least for now. And because I, I get the impression that a lot of times guys just want to play, right? Yeah, I just wanted to play, but I think a big, big thing for me it was kind of. You know, I felt it was a destined thing. Uh, that's part of my backstory. I, like, I helped one of my buddies get up here, and uh, um, he got he got shot that later that year in Calgary. A lot of people know about Mylon Hicks. Hicks. That was my roommate on the 49ers. And so, when Calgary called me, it was I knew I had to go, and kind of playing for him type thing. And then it started a career for me so it was cool you know I knew I was going there for a reason I prayed I prayed about it it was like am I gonna go to Canada right now like I don't know anything about Canada and then for it to be that team that was like my sign so, yeah. so sorry was this the year after modern yeah this was yeah. pretty much yeah it was that yeah. couple months later yeah. yeah so it would be that next season yeah, yeah. it must have been pretty emotional yeah it was it was because I had talked to him it was literally two days before, and it's crazy because I tore my foot on the Bills and two days before, and we had just talked on the phone. I was going to fly there because when you – on the NFL, I was taking reps with the second team. We'd have that week off. So I was going to fly to Calgary to see him in Calgary and all that. And then I got hurt, and then he 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 passed away that next two days later. So that was the next time I stepped on the field was in Calgary. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, he's left quite a legacy. I remember that yeah. that season. I mean, uh, I know Edmonton was playing a game in Calgary, and they they did up a, a jersey yeah. for him, and they put mm -hmm. it on the field while they were doing a warm ups. Uh, that really hit this league hard. I mean, obviously, yeah, you know? yeah well, it, it definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got to Edmonton last year. We're going to talk about that coming up uh, in the second half. We're also going to talk about uh, uh, your community work off the field, and I know. That's very important to you, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's a family thing. You know, my grandma being one of the first African-American principals in the city of Philly uh, and going to the William Penn Charter School where we have to volunteer every Friday. So things that have been instilled in me and certain people who've helped me along through my career have said, make sure you give back as payment for me helping you, so right. tried to live up to that. We're going to talk about that coming up. First, I want to ask you: You mentioned the experimental league. Uh, I, your uh, your resume says you played for the Florida Black Tips and Hudson Valley Fort. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that league, and what was it like being in it? Um, so I think at, at the first time it was the FX FL. And then the second time, it was basically the predecessor to the XFL. Like it was that that nucleus of people then yeah. started the XFL. So, oh uh, yeah, it was honestly for me, no team seen me play O line, so I had to find somewhere to get a O line snap, and that's that's where we found, and it worked out. But yeah, that was that was literally all that was. I had to find somewhere to play O line so somebody could get film on me. So. Yeah, film, it's funny. Eh? <laughs> Film's what gets you a job, right? It doesn't yeah. matter where you've been, but if yeah. you don't have film to prove it's it no and film, yeah. for GMs and coaches yeah. to look at, exactly. you're not going anywhere, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. All right. All right, we got uh, more coming up with uh, Justin Renfro in just a minute. The Antler Up podcast is filmed and recorded inside the Joey Moss Suite the Brickfield at Commonwealth Stadium. If you're interested in purchasing the Joey Moss Suite for an upcoming game, just email partnerships at goelks.com. The Elks coming off their first win of the season, Canada Day in Hamilton. They beat the Hamilton Tiger Cats in a wild come-from-behind win. 29-25 was the score. Next up for the Elks, it's the Calgary Stampeders, the Battle of Alberta tomorrow night here on the Brickfield at Commonwealth Stadium. Uh, if you want to be here, head to Ticketmaster.com. Also head to GoElks.com for all your ticket information. Tickets begin as low as $20 plus service fees. Elks and the Calgary Stampeders tomorrow here on the Brick Field at Commonwealth Stadium. Now, back to Justin Renfro. You came to Edmonton in uh, 2021, last season. Mm -hmm. uh, you kind of, it was a weird entrance to Edmonton because you signed in the off season, as I recall, right? Yeah. And there was about seven or eight offensive tackles who signed that year. And then all of a sudden, 
uh, Derek Dennis didn't want to come anymore. Yeah. Uh, guys are getting hurt left and right, and you had been released at this point, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you got another phone call again and said, uh, let's – yeah. Let's do a do-over here. Yeah, I always I always joke with Dan, so same thing happened again this year. Every week, every time I come pick up my box of stuff, I get called back the next week. So, uh, yeah, that's I pretty much that's what happened. Uh, you know, I was set to come play, and then you know had some back and forth with management, and they were kind of trying to press me without. You know, without my agent and stuff, I was just like, I'm not comfortable uh, to do it yet. And so they, they took another option. And, uh, you know, like how the cards fell, that didn't play out. So they had to come back uh, anyway. And me and my agent had everything in line at that point. So it was time to play. So we played. And you ended up getting seven starts. I think played yeah. eight games last mm-hmm. year. Uh, how was it playing? What was you had 20 off like everybody else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you, where did you, what did you do in 19? 19, I was in BC. In BC, that's Yeah, right. I got yeah. traded from Calgary to BC yeah. midseason. Uh, well, it was, last year was a battle, uh, you know, uh, playing hurt, uh, both my grandparents passing, all that. Like, in one season coming off the COVID year was just – it was a battle. The whole year was a battle. Uh, and just it, w- it helped to be here and kind of see my boys every day, be with Wilder, be with Tomas, be with Terry. And, uh, yeah, just kind of grinded it through. And then towards the end there, having the, the multiple tears in my knee, that w- it, w- it was tough trying to lumber around, but, you know, just try to be a good teammate at that point. So you ended up coming back last year, played, and, and yeah. had a role. Uh, tell me about this off season and, and coming back this year. Uh, you got signed uh, late again and, and, yeah. and coming to camp. Uh, this year, uh, I shoot up until what three week, three four weeks ago, I wasn't going to play football again. So that was that was that part. I've been on the road pretty much the entire off season doing my cooking show and happy with that. And I came to Edmonton to kind of. Finish up a few cooking things I had promised, a cancer event I had promised to do last year, um, and kind of just seal, you know, just seal up commitments I had made the previous year when I thought I was going to play. And, uh, you know, see Tomas, hang out with him a little bit, and I start working out. And then I think what I caught that, I caught the home opener. And, you know, after catching the home opener, I was like, I've been working out. I think I think I could help the team a little bit, and you know, ended up getting a call if I wanted to come play. And uh, you know, I, I really did. I, I missed football, missed being around the guys, and so I came. I imagine out. it. You work so hard to get there. It must be difficult to say goodbye, right? And just yeah. to, to, to shut it off. Right? Yeah, definitely. When the legs are still churning and stuff. So you were uh, a nominee for the Tom Pate Award. For your community service, uh, yeah. that was what year was that? In BC Cal- and Calgary, so in, in BC and Calgary, so what is that? Eighteen and nineteen. Eighteen and nineteen. Yeah. That how? Why is that so important to you? Uh it's just well, one, you know, going back to Domingo Graham helping me out and kind of training me, and he said like, "You're good. I know you're going to be able to get this." And he he said when I, you know, when you get on, when you make a team help as many other people you don't need to pay me just help as many other people as you can and so that's what I do I try to every year coach a youth team do something with the boys and girls club do something with big brothers big sisters and so that's just I try to do and obviously it 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 gives you the warm tinglys right I mean it's there's a payback for you in this too right to help people yeah definitely and you know uh Calgary I got to coach like I've got to see those kids grow up you know they're now in the position. A lot of the kids I coached in eighth grade are getting recruited. You know, they still message me. I'm sending their film to coaches, different friends. You know, some some of my friends are at prep schools. Some of those kids need prep schools. So I'm connecting dots there. So it just, you know, kind of the same way things fell into place and people helped me. I'm just trying to be that for a lot of kids up here who don't have that kind of sports guidance. And You know, I've, I've literally been through everything you could in terms being recruited, playing at the next level, all that stuff. So to give somebody a road map, I feel like is the right thing. Pay it forward. Right? Yeah, yeah. Pay it forward. Gotcha. All right. Uh, when 
did you get your love for cooking? Uh, I've been cooking probably since like fourth or fifth grade. My mom, uh, she used to produce Good Morning America, and so she had to get the stories ready overnight. So she would get home right in time to take me to school. But, you know, she taught me early on, you know, fourth or fifth grade, I was cooking breakfast. I knew how to cook all breakfast, and then you gradually start making a BLT, and you go from there. And so, yeah, I've been cooking a long time. Wow. Uh, yeah. And the idea for the JR Network? Yeah. Uh, tell me about that. Tell me, explain to me what I, what exactly it is and what so, you're getting from it. So, uh, yeah, the, the JR Network, one, came out of COVID. We had the, that was my first, I didn't, like, that was something crazy to think about in itself. That was my first break of not playing football since first grade. And so I had to find a, something to do to occupy that time. And, uh, you know, going to restaurants has been a thing ever since I went to the Super Bowl with the Seahawks. Uh, the Schneider family who owns the team, they uh, – they run a benefit dinner every year, and so everybody on the team knew I could cook. So you're, we're all supposed to be celebrity waiters, but instead of me being a celebrity waiter, I ended up cooking all, like, I think it was like 150 steaks. I ended up cooking the 150 steaks, and and people served them. And so, you know, guys were like, oh, you should do this. You should do this. Like, you're good at it. And so, you know, that stuck with me, and so, uh, you know. Uh, had the break in COVID. My buddy Vinny, shout out Vinny, uh, back home. He owns Menino's Family Restaurant. That was kind of my first episode. And helping him kind of get people like, hey, we're still in here making food, but it's on skip the dishes. You can't come in anymore. And so from there it took off. I've got to cook with Michelin star chefs. I've traveled to Jamaica. Shoot, before this season I was on the road for two months, hitting New York, New Haven, did uh, did Atlanta, Miami, Palm Beach, teamed up with other CFL guys in their areas, uh, you know, and it's just been a lot of fun, and I figured out how to add the community piece. So, you know, in Philly, cooked 300 burritos for Karen for Friends. In New Orleans, we uh, cooked 100 pull boys for the foster system. In New Haven, I talked to a whole – First through eighth grade, went around the whole school, then fed the seventh and eighth graders and spent time at every table. So it's uh, kind of a everything I like to do coming together. So, are, yeah. you, are you self-taught? Did, did you go to school at all? For uh, I guess you would say the show is my t- – that's what uh, – the show is my teaching. You know, I'm going around – I know how to cook, but I feel like I'm getting refined. Like uh, in Edmonton, I went with Sushi by Vin, and me and him made sushi. Uh and, you know, I've done uh, northern chicken, learning about brining chicken. So every time you go somewhere, it's a, a new – you pick up a new technique, a new way to plate, new way to dish it. So it's a lot of fun. All right. We're going down a dangerous road here because I'm addicted <laughs> to watching cooking videos okay. on uh, yeah. recipe videos and stuff on, on Facebook and Instagram yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. So uh, JR Network's on Instagram, right? Yep, yep. Are you on and, Facebook too? Or? Uh, not on Facebook, but – uh, you off of J dot Renfro, my main Instagram, right in the profile. You'll see the YouTube link, and then the JR Network also has an Instagram as well. And yeah, uh, a lot of fun things coming up, uh, and we'll be doing a lot of stuff with kids in Edmonton this next few weeks. That's cool. What's your favorite thing to cook? Uh it's t- I no specific dish. Uh, any seafood. That's that's my thing. Really been heavy of the seafood and. The seafood and sushi has just been, I don't know, those restaurants have been gravitating to answer and back, so it's fun. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and you've been doing some videos in Edmonton? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I did some last year, and then uh, getting some ready. Uh, there's di- there's a lot more organizations now that COVID's down. You can do a lot more. Like There's a nonprofit that teaches kids to cook in Edmonton. I'm going to be working with them. Uh, doing something with Shark Club, and I'm going to try to bring some kids from Boys and Girls Club. So, yeah, it'll be fun. And then, you know, always got to get the guys. Everybody's always hounding me to cook with them. So, you'll see. It will be a bunch of fun this you're, year. Uh, you're getting this group together to cook for them. What are you cooking? Uh, 
Well, most of those guys follow me on IG, so I got requests, you know. People have seen – I got a thing right now, the Glizzy Burger that's going, you know, the burger inside the hot dog. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I a lot of that. people a lot of people like that right now. And then a lot of guys like the stuffed uh, – I do a stuffed salmon with shrimp and crab meat. So, you know, I got a lot of requests for that. And then I'm trying to get my – see, I don't know who we got to talk to, but I'm trying to get my buddy Mel – Dark Side of the Grill. He's an Edmonton-based barbecue guy. Uh, see if we could get him to do a whole roast pig down there on the field with the guys or something. But I think we'll, we'll have some good stuff. We'll have to make sure to get you to come out as well. Nice, yeah. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, uh, right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, was, the, I, I, I want to try the, the hot dog and the burger inside. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm, I, I'm worried, though, that the, the, the wiener is going to break apart every time no, I try to no. cut it. No, no. See, the key is you got to leave about the one inch at the end of each side. So that it doesn't burst, and then you don't you don't stuff it too much. You get it nice and flat on don't both sides. Don't get greedy, so, eh? yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know it's all about also. I don't do bad hot dogs. So like we, I've never done hot dogs. Done a lot of stuff. Shout out Johnsonville, Canada. You know, do a lot. They make good meat and stuff, so it works. And then there's some good butchers out here. Uh, Grove City Butchers out in Spruce Grove. That's yeah. where I like right now. Yeah. Uh, and they. They do it good out there. We'll be with them soon too. Yeah, we got to end this because I'm hungry now. Okay, I'm hungry yeah. now. Uh, Justin, it's been great getting to know you. Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks for, for spending me. some time with us uh, today. Uh, I wish you lots of luck going forward. Appreciate on it. Both football and cooking, because uh, you're good it. at both of them, obviously. Yeah. So I uh, hope to see you back out in the field soon, and um, let's break bread sometime. Yeah, sounds good. All right, Thank uh, you. that is uh, Justin Renfro uh, on Antler Up this week. Uh, head back in the archives, check out some of the past episodes. Uh, and uh, enjoy those. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all that other stuff you have to do, uh, and uh, come back and see us uh, uh, next time on uh, Antler Up. Uh, he's Justin Renfro. I'm Morley Scott. We'll see you next week on Antler Up. Right. See ya. Antler Up, Edmonton, touchdown out. James Wilder Jr.'s got a pair. Oh, he's got a man wide open. Mike Jones has it inside the 10. He'll walk the dog to the end zone. Antler Up, Edmonton, touchdown Elks.